This build almost killed me. Let me explain. Every so often, I have a project that I can only describe as cursed. And of all the cursed builds, this one takes the cake. This is the story of the build that almost broke me. I spent the last three months trying to build the most insane Minecraft map in existence. And from the dozens of areas that I want to do, I've got two. <laughs> it's slow, but I'm not trying to just make a map. I'm trying to make a world come to life. I've been adapting the source material from a book that I wrote. The only problem, it takes a long time. To speed things along, this time I'm gonna bring four of the best builders that I know along for the ride. We're gonna start off with some light terraforming. Well, not exactly light. This area is gonna be 800 by 800 blocks. The total map's gonna have a surface area of over a billion blocks, so I have more than enough room to work with. If you want to download this build and the rest of my builds, you can head over to my Patreon. This city isn't a city at all. It's called the Melodic Forge, and it lies within the nation of Sekra. It's a little far off from the last few areas that we built, but I really wanted to get out of the deserts for this one. Legend states that there used to be three islands here, and was home to Manaya, the greatest blacksmith to ever live. Manaya's forge stood atop the tallest one. His weapons were so powerful because they weren't forged with normal fire. Manaya used lightning. But as Moore discovered his legendary craftsmanship, some wanted to take his work by force. He needed a stronghold. Every time he brought down his hammer, the earth shook and cracked. After years of work, the once tall island had been transformed into a sunken fortress. Okay, the terrain looks good. Successful first day. But the next morning, things started to go wrong. I started off by trying to do the organic, but an hour in, I couldn't keep going. I left it sitting, barely having started. Okay, not a problem, I'll just start on a house. I like houses. There's gonna be a lot of different ones, so I might as well get started on a couple now. But the same thing started happening. I got an hour in, and there was nothing left in the tank. This tiny house took no time at all, and I still needed a break. It was concerning, especially at the start of a build. Normally, I have to force myself away from my computer, but today it felt off. I told myself to relax, took off the pressure, and just decided to build for fun. It was better to accomplish something than nothing at all. I was able to get a little bit done, but I was still getting frustrated, and I think I knew why. I was burnt out. I hadn't taken a break since the last video released, and I was starting to feel the effects now. I'd built so much over the past year that I thought I was immune to burnout. But no matter who you are, if you don't take time to collect yourself, it happens. If you try to push through it, the burnout just gets worse. Eventually, it becomes a compounding snowball of dread. The next day, I decided to take some time off. I'd been losing focus, and if I kept pushing myself, I might burn out entirely. But I might have an idea. Snarple, I need your help. Huh? This is Snarple, the Gradient God. They're working on a huge city project right now to serve as the Bakery Public Server's hub, so they're pretty busy. I'm gonna have to ask them really nicely if I want them to help. This thing isn't done yet? Didn't you start this like three months ago? Well, it's a big project. It'll be finished soon. Yeah, it says here in our DMs that you asked me to help in December. It's the middle of March, dude. Uh, like I said, it's really almost done. Wow, and you still have a lot to go. Is this a dream? Tell you what, whatever you make for me, you can put in here. Win-win, right? Yeah, actually, I, I can do that. I need so many different house styles because I want this to have a stacked city vibe, like in this reference that I found on ArtStation from Prabo... Prabu, oh, I, I definitely butchered that. Shovel had already made a couple of small sample houses for me to go off, so I used sections of these small huts he put together. I started with this larger building in the reference image. It's got these cool sectioned outdoor shades that wrapped around the build that I wanted to try doing. I decided to use pretty dull colors as well, with only small hints of blues and orange, because the villages play more of a supporting role in the build, and the focus would be on the large structure that Shovel had already planned. When making the second house, I mainly reused and edited sections from the buildings that already existed, sort of just filling in gaps. All right, looking pretty good. You'll probably need to make a few more, but these should be enough to get them started. And I think I have just the spot for them in my project. Speaking of which, looks like I'm almost done. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna die before I finish this project. I touched some grass, went shopping, and scored this awesome new monitor. And I slept for more than five hours. It was nice. And as the time went on, I finally found a new direction. It was like a switch had finally been flipped back on. Instantly, the fire was reignited. I 
I finally had a spark. I was hoping that the motivation would come back with the rest, but I didn't think it had happened so quickly. I was cruising along, building at a faster pace than I had in months. It all started to flow. The Great Hall is the main community hub for the Forge. It houses the most prestigious smiths, along with the leaders of the other two communities. There's a lot going on here, but I think I should let a familiar face give you all the details. Well, well, well. Look who came crawling back. Come on. I know you want to make some more interiors. Kinda. It'll be fun. Pretty please? Okay, fine. The first thing this place needs is space for these leaders and master smiths to live. I created a series of cozy rooms with beds, wardrobes, and some greenery. It's easy to imagine the officials of the Great Hall getting a good night's rest here before heading out for a hard day's work at the forge. Next, I tackled the feasting hall. Located at the very top, it is one of the most important areas. Any festival celebrating their god, the abundance of lightning, or the sea and its magic is kicked off with a grand feast. Furthermore, as smiths of the most powerful weapons in all the world, many trade embassies come here. Countless negotiations are carried out over a delicious meal. The open-air portico allows diners to see across all of the Melodic Forge. While Achilles was renovating the upper portions, I started filling out the rest of the pit. Sacralon steel is the only metal in Etheria that is forged with lightning. It makes the steel sharper and enchantments more potent. This is the only place where that happens, so it's constantly fending off attacks from pirates and raiders. So they needed a secure place to store the finished product. This building will serve as the perfect vault to stash the most valuable weapons in the world. But the most dangerous items needed even more protection in the main palace. The Melodic Forge houses vast shipments of the most valuable metal in all the world that then gets forged into magical weapons. It's basically a giant, shining target for pirates and raiders looking to get rich quick. But as the armory shows, any would-be invaders are biting off more than they can chew. The people here are well equipped to defend their precious crafts. As the day went on, I started to feel off again. Not like the first time when I was burnt out. I was blasting through the build at this point. It felt more physical. Eh, I decided to brush it off. I felt a little funky, but I could build just fine. That was the most important thing. While Shovel pushed on with his work, I tackled the council room. Here's where all the important decisions are made between the community leaders and master smiths. Any trade agreements, weapon designs, and city business is discussed around these tables. Up this staircase is the throne room. The Melodic Forge doesn't have a single king or leader. Instead, this throne is a monument to Manaya, first master smith and founder of the Great Forge. Shovel will tell you more of his story later. Speaking of, as I kept working, I saw Shovel starting to slow down. As the afternoon went on, I started to get worse. I had chills running down my entire body, and I felt like I had a burning ball of bread stuck in my throat. I had reached my breaking point. I needed to see what was up. Like a freaking encyclopedia. Well, that's not good. Maybe this build was cursed. I had never gotten COVID before, and now I get it on a 30 minute Goodwill run to buy a new monitor. Unbelievable. I'm never going outside again. I told Achilles what was up and ended early that day. Thankfully, they were able to keep knocking things out while I was bedridden. Welcome to the commons, the heart of this community. A bustling market takes up the majority of the space, selling everything from food and clothing to tools and everyday enchantments. Three small forges can also be found scattered about the space. Here more common items are made, rather than the lightning forged weapons the city is known for. People still need their tools and cookware, after all. Community gatherings are held and festivals celebrated within this pavilion. At the back of the commons lie the stables, but these are not for any ordinary horses. The people here have tamed magical sea serpents, riding them through the skies and water alike. Here the merchants and any visitors to the market can keep their mounts, with plenty of soft hay to lie on and cool water to drink. Above the commons is the official palace stables, where the leaders and master smiths keep their own serpents. And with that, the Great Hall is complete. I wonder if Shovel is feeling any better. The next morning, I decided that I needed to rally. There was just too much to do. I still had the three burrows to build, along with the centerpiece, a giant serpent organic. I was gonna push through this. Stupid, maybe. Reckless, definitely. Worth it, unknown. Here's the plan. Have a giant serpent statue with glowing runes that is coiled around the top of the pit. 
After doing some initial measurements and getting started, I realized that I was definitely firing at a lower caliber. My symptoms were getting worse as the day went on, and the build showed it. I was getting sloppy. I needed help. And not just any help. I needed an ace. Bing bong. This is Junipy. Probably one of the best builders in Minecraft at the moment, and a close friend. I can always count on his constructive criticism. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on here? Well, I just- This looks terrible. Here, sit down. Did you just crack your knuckles? What? No. How is that even possible? Uh -huh. We don't even have fingers. I didn't do it. They're just little square nub things. You ready to build or what? <sighs> yeah. With Juno's help, the dragon started to take shape. Having him on call helped me stay awake and not spiral into a heap of indecision. It was a huge relief, because I needed the statue for the lore. This is a statue of their god. Manaya, the legendary blacksmith, continued to grow in renown with each passing year. In a few short decades, his prowess had even caught the attention of the gods. One day, the war god named Tumatuanga, or Tu, visited the forge. He wanted Manaya to craft him the ultimate weapon, to destroy his brothers, the other gods. Manaya saw the devastation that this would cause, and he refused. He would not play a part in destroying the world. But this angered too. In retaliation, he cursed Manaya to become a terrible serpent, unable to forge anything ever again. But Manaya was clever. Even as a serpent, his mind was unchanged. He was able to breathe lightning now, and he didn't need to forge the weapons himself. Unknown to two, Manaya had a daughter. He passed his knowledge on to her, and she made it her mission to keep the form alive throughout the generations. Even after hundreds of years, the smiths never forgot who was the first. This statue will watch over and protect the city, just as Manaya did when he protected the whole world. And at the end of the day, we got all the shaping done. It wasn't easy, but Juno was able to pull me through. Things were looking up. I was starting to feel better and was kind of confused why the world shut down because of this illness. But the next day, COVID reminded me why. That morning, I could barely move. My head was spinning and I was hot and cold at the same time. I couldn't do anything. No joke, this was the sickest I had ever been. The curse continued and Juno didn't even know. Hello? Anybody here? Juno, I can't move. Freaking guy stood me up. Guess I'll just go hang out with Snarple then. Unbelievable. <laughs> Once again, I was out for the entire day. As quickly as they came, the symptoms left. The next morning, I was ready to go. Juno was still sleeping, but I couldn't wait after being bedridden yesterday. I needed to keep building. I started out with some texturing. The plan was to color in the stone, obviously, but I also wanted to have a bunch of intricate Maori designs on the dragon's flank. Manaya's statue is more than just an idol, it's a magical conduit. These runes provide the forge with additional protection from outside threats. After putting the first coat on, I took a step back and... Yeah, I hate it. Starting over once again, but I was okay with it. This is part of the process. Don't be afraid to mess up an idea. A lot of people get paralyzed by overthinking, but most of the time, I always screw up my first shot. But you can't fix a blank page. Get something down. Learn. Try something new. I decided to put the symbols on hold for now. They were just complicating things. I met up with Juno and we tag teamed the second round of coloring and ended up making something that we both really loved. The last thing to do was paste it in. Oh god, the lag. What's going on out there? Nothing. Frickin' yahoos. Hmm, it's pretty dark, and it doesn't really fit with the rest of the build, but I think I can fix that. Now, it's time to give it a little magic. In Maori mythology, you see a lot of these intricate geometric patterns, and I bet you've seen these before. But did you know that each of these patterns have different meanings? Triangles normally represent shark teeth, and are a totem of strength. I don't want the symbols to be too overpowering, so I think sticking with a simple shape like these should do the trick. But just to be safe, I'm gonna make about eight more. I like having options. All right, this looks really cool. It's finally starting to look how I imagined. 
After 10 grueling days, I finally felt like I was nearing the home stretch on this one. I wasn't done yet, but I could finally feel the light starting to shine on this build. I bid farewell to Juno and started on the last leg of the journey, making the three burrows. I love these buildings that Snarple did. They're perfect. But I can't exactly fill this place with the same five buildings over and over again. That's a little too lazy. I spent the morning of day 10 whipping up some more structures, taking bits and pieces from the previous houses and mashing them up to go from this to this. Ah, there we go. Let's plop them in. The first of the three areas is called Smithboro. It's located in the pit itself and is home to all of the smithing families. The original descendants of Manaya are nobles and they live in the Great Hall, but the rest live out here, practicing their craft and passing it on to their descendants. This method is definitely faster, but it comes at a price. Look at this. What a freaking mess, man. If I don't clear these out afterwards, I think I'm gonna give Achilles an aneurysm. It's not fun, but it's gotta be done. The next borough is called Enchantment Bay. The residents consist of devout disciples of Manaya. Their main job is enchanting the weapons created by the smiths. They spend their days worshipping Manaya in the form of song. They believed that if you play beautifully enough at the shorelines, Manaya will grace you with a legendary enchantment. The bay's main building is the Sekralon Sanctum. A pool of magical water flows into the center of the room. Any enchantment sung to life along the shorelines are taken here where the weapons are then bathed in the waters and bound with their powerful essence. Magic isn't just reserved for the weapons, though. The people of the Forge come here to get enchanted tattoos that allow them to amplify their abilities. These tattoos are formed from a powdered version of the renowned Sekralon steel, which is processed in the room above. Finally, there's the Mercantile District. After the tools have been enchanted, they're ready to be packaged and shipped out to the rest of the world. This is one of the most heavily guarded areas in all of Etheria. Raiders love trying to get a free boatload of Sekralon steel. Magic weapons and valuable metal aren't much use without a place to actually put them. This large building provides plenty of storage space for the valuable goods that power the forge. These bottom floors hold the raw ore and processed metal of Sekralon steel. Above are piles of crates and boxes packed with the finished tools and weapons, ready to be sent out. With the cities complete, I remembered that there was one final building that I had forgotten. The forge itself. I wanted this to be an extremely intricate piece, so I brought on my friend Vahan, who specializes in detailing. Vahan came up with this crazy gradient and beautiful details for the main portion, and ended up creating a base that fits in perfectly with the rest of the build. And as I finished up the upper portion, the build quickly reached completion. As the last block was placed, I breathed a huge sigh of relief. I love building, but this one was a struggle. But that's okay, this isn't supposed to be easy. If it was, I doubt I'd want to keep doing it. This build was a test, a crucible. I may have faltered a few times throughout, but I was able to recover thanks to the help of my friends. Building is not easy. It's not always fun either, but it's worth it. I'm confident that no matter what I'm going through, or how challenging an obstacle, I'll be able to push through it with the help of my fellow builders. They're the greatest superpower. Make sure you go follow them on their accounts, and thanks for watching.